praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is glad to be here today? I'm here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory. Great things He has done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the heart hear His voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, God. To the Father, true Jesus, the Son, and give Him the glory. Great things He has done. Lord, we just give you glory. The enemy wanted to shut the churches up, but God, you have stepped in. We thank you. Oh, we give you honor, we give you praise, we give you adoration. Father, we thank you. A thousand tongues is not enough to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for showing yourself mighty on our behalf. Blessed be your name forever and ever. Because of worship in Jesus' name. Amen. So we continue to celebrate. On Sabbath, we're going to celebrate what God has done for us. Hallelujah. What God has done for us. He's a good God. He's a good God. So we give him glory. We give him praise. We give him adoration. Tonight, I just, just before we get to the word, I'm just going to worship the Holy Spirit for a few minutes. I just want us to rise up wherever we are. Wherever you are seated, please stand up and let's worship the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you. Holy Spirit, I I appreciate you, the anointing, we appreciate you, our helper, we appreciate you. I say you are worthy, Holy Ghost, you are worthy, Holy Ghost, you are worthy, Holy Ghost, my helper, 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 you are worthy, Holy Ghost. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. My helper, Holy Spirit, we celebrate you. My teacher, we celebrate you. Our helper, we celebrate you. The anointed, we celebrate you. Great you because you are worthy, Holy Ghost. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. My helper, helper, helper. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. You are worthy, Holy Ghost. My helper, Holy Ghost. You are too much, oh. Macho, Holy Ghost, you are too much. You are the excellent Holy Ghost, you are too much. You are too much, Holy Ghost, you are too much. You are the excellent Jesus, you are too much. You are too much, Jesus, you are too much. You are the excellent God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you tonight. We celebrate you. Today is a good day. We appreciate you, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence as we get into the Word tonight. We ask that you be the one to teach. Be free to teach. Be free to rebuke. Be free to exalt. Be free to work a miracle. I pray that you take over my mind, my call, my soul, my spirit, my mind. I surrender to you, Holy Ghost. Be the one to speak to us. Lord, I pray that your word will go with power. It will be life-changing. 
Lord, that will not be the same again. I pray that revelation knowledge will flow freely, un, un, undivided. Satan, you are bound in Jesus' name. You will not distract attention. You will not destroy the flow of revelation knowledge. Holy Spirit, let your, let your word, word of wisdom, word of knowledge flow freely. I pray as many as they are tuning, Lord, bless them and encourage us. Thank you, Father, because we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I, I just want to share with us from my heart, book of Leviticus, chapter 10. Someone said, your life can be either be a warning or an example. Hallelujah. Your life can either be a warning or an example. It can be a warning because they will tell God, will show you. Your life become a warning. Don't do it that way. Because if you do it that way, you end up this way. It can be an example of good. If you do it this way, this is where you end up. So your life cannot be a warning or an example. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, people can see you. Somebody said, there are two sides of people. Look at the rich and the poor. There are some habits the rich have. Follow it. The habits that have made some people poor, look at their life. Their life can be a warning to you. The other ones can be an example. So we are talking about the way we live, the way we talk in church, the way we do things. Your life can be an example or a warning. In the book of Leviticus chapter 10, I want to read a very strange story to us. You know, in the preparation, I want to prepare us for the resumption of the service that we're going to have. Churches are going to resume. And when we are resuming, we are entering into a, into a new season for the church. We are entering into a new season for the church, ladies and gentlemen. Another season. We've left, this is, we are entering into the season of overflow. The season of the post-pandemic season. A season different from what we've had. We've had the pre-pandemic, the pandemic, and this is a post-pandemic. From 1st of August, I announced here that we are entering, it's the beginning of a new season. So the church itself is entering into a new season. And this evening, I just want us to get ourselves ready for this new season. It's not going to be as usual as anymore. It's not going to be the same thing that usually happens anymore. In Leviticus 10, the Bible talks about the story of Naha, Nadab and Abihu. The Bible says, Heron had two sons. Their name was Nadab and Abihu. They are called into priesthood. And God has given instruction on what the priest should do. So one day, each of them took a censer and put fire in it and put incense on it and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So those people were trained priests. They, God told them how to offer fire before God. And so they brought the house of God. They offered fire. Their job is to offer fire in the presence of God. But the Bible calls they offered profaned fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded and something strange happened. Suddenly, fire. Everybody say fire. Fire came out from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Wow. Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord said. By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. Aaron, their father, heard his peace. Two of his sons died. Then Moses called Michelle. Elizabeth and the son of Uzel and the uncle of Aaron said to them, Come here, carry your brothers from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went and carried them by their tunics of the camp, as Moses said. And Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and the sons, Do not uncover your head, nor tear your clothes, lest you die. The rot come upon all people, but let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the body of the Lord, which the Lord has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die. For the anointing of the Lord is upon you. And he, and he did according to the word of Moses. This is very strange. Their brothers, their cousins, their brothers just died. And he says, you must not cry. You must not mourn. You must not even, you must not even tear your clothes. Then the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, do not drink wine or intoxicating drink, you now your sons with you. When you go into the tabernacle of the meeting, lest you die. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation. 
that you may distinguish between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean, that you may teach your children and the children of Israel all the statutes the Lord has spoken to these days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a very strange story because these people were priests, but they prayed to the presence of God. They were trained priests, they were the sons of Aaron. In fact, God told them, He says, Aaron and his children shall be priesthood forever. And so they, this was the first born and the second born of Aaron. And they went to the presence of God. And they offered fire the way they usually offer it. But God suddenly fire came out from the Lord and devoured them. And they wanted to cry. He says, God said, Aaron, don't cry. You can't cry. You are not going to mourn for them. Hmm. Serious thing. He told their brothers, don't cry. Then in verse 10, he says, a number Leviticus 10 10. It says, It shall be a statue forever that you may distinguish between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean, that you may teach your children. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a difference between holy and unholy things. We are entering into a season where God will not just take everything. I mean, of us know that God is the same yesterday, today, and the same yesterday, today, and forever the same. He has not changed. But God, we are entering into a season where God is not going to take things, things are not going to be as usual anymore. Now, when you begin to study this, you begin to wonder why would God do that? You know, but one thing that is, the Bible says that these people, they went to offer on holy fire, profane fire, not the kind of fire, they didn't follow God's instruction, not the kind of fire that God asked them to through, because God was angry because they began to treat only things as an only. They could not differentiate between only and only. They began, they, 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 they were joking with spiritual things, ladies and gentlemen. And fire came. They, they, they did not obey the instructions of God. Let me say a few things here. I began to study this from the book, Petrus and Prophets, written by Helen G. White. She says, Neither by have you had not been trained the habit of self control in their youth. They are not used to following strict instructions. They, were, they had been indulged. By their father. Mm. So, number one thing, number thing is this people are, who have not the habits of self control. Ladies and gentlemen, we must train our children to self control. Not only must we train them, we also must be, we must train self control. We must be self controlled. We must not allow our children to just do anything anyhow. We must not indulge them. So they have been indulged by their father, they have been trained to do whatever they want. They've been allowed. They said this. The father said yes. They said this. Father said yes. So they are so used to doing things the way they want, not the way they have been instructed. That's what. That's, that's where the problem started from. They were used to doing things. Ladies and gentlemen, God is either you follow God the way He says it, or He does not accept it. Since they have not been taught to respect authority of their father, they they, they did not realize the necessity of exact obedience to the requirements of God. That's number two. They have not been taught to respect what? Authority. So this, so when, when we look at this story, you think God was very, very mean or God was harsh on them. No, God was not harsh. In fact, these children have had opportunities to, for them to change but the way their parents have trained them and then the way they have, after they've grown up, the way they have been living their life. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not understand why God got angry but I'm going to let us know. I'm going to start but letting you know that if, when you go to verse 8, God says something to, to, to Aaron. He says, the Lord spoke to Aaron, verse 9, do not drink wine or intoxicating drink. You are your sons with you when you go to the presence of the Lord. So, what happened that day, actually, when you study it, Ellen White wrote, and the Bible says, what happened was that Narab and Abiru have, they would not have committed that fatal sin. I did not become partially intoxicated with wine, with the free use of wine. They came to the altar, partly drunk. And God, and then so they, they now missed fire. So it was, it was not just the fire. They didn't just offer profane fire, but they came to the altar, partly drunk. It doesn't matter. They, they, they are used to, they, they are so, the, 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 the holy things, so they are so used to the holy things. 
So they think they can come to the presence of God anyhow. And God says, I will not take this anymore. Because listen, ladies and gentlemen, to whom much is given, much is what? Much is required. You can't come to the presence of God anyhow. It says, Aaron had mistakenly indulged his sons, prepared them for subjects of divine judgment. So you see, let's see, talks to parents, for example, when you indulge your children, when children are wrong, correct them. When children are wrong, please correct them. Aaron, that's why God told Aaron, Aaron, you are also responsible. You have indulged your children. You didn't let your children know the difference between holy and unholy things. We must let people know that God, there are certain things God does not accept. We must be able to differentiate, distinguish between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean things. Aaron had indulged his children. They are the children of the high priest. They are used to what they want. They can do whatever they want. They don't want discipline. Ladies and gentlemen, some parents don't want you to discipline their children. When you say anything, they say, uh-uh. Ladies and gentlemen, with the, if you don't allow your children to be disciplined, eventually, sin that they didn't discipline them will destroy them. So we can't. And then not only, par- not only parents and children, we as individuals, if you, if you refuse to live a disciplined life, those who must walk with God, especially those who come to the altar, must be disciplined. If you are coming to God's presence, you must live a disciplined life. If you don't live a disciplined life, the sin that you, that you have refused to overcome will eventually overpower you and destroy you. Aaron mistakenly indulged his children and then he prepared them for divine judgment. What are you preparing your children for? Are you preparing them for divine judgment? The way you live, are you preparing for divine judgment? So when we are living careless life, we are preparing for divine judgment. Now, number four, it says, God designed to teach the people that they must approach him with reverence and awe. And in his own appointed way, he will not accept partial obedience. They brought fire. God said they can bring fire. But this time, they didn't kindle the fire the way they wanted. They just wanted to bring anyhow fire. And God said, I'm not going to accept that. God will not accept partial obedience. There are several people that have come. And they, have, they, they, they want God to accept them. They interpret scriptures the way they want it. It doesn't really matter. That's not what God means. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a hard lesson for man to know that God really means what he says. I want to repeat that. Someone says, it is a hard lesson for man to know that God really means whatever he what he says. As we, as we are about to reopen church, we must not mix holy things with unholy things. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a hard lesson for man to realize that God really means what he says. He spoke to, I mean, God says, Adam and Eve, the day you eat out of this garden, out of this tree, you will die. Man thought God was joking. He said, I will send you out. But they did. They went, pluck one, eat. And immediately they ate, what happened? God came. They died. They began to die. God said to Uzzah, do not touch the ark. But said, the ark was going to stumble. It was not just the ark. The ark was going to stumble. Uzzah went and said, let me touch it. Did you notice that when you studied that story, they said the ark used to be in Uzzah's house. So he, was, he, he couldn't differentiate between only and only things. He was so used to the ark. He has gotten used to spiritual things. You know, people get used to things. They get used to only things. So they, they began to teach only things as do mundane things. People get used to their, to, they, they, get, they get used to pastors, seeing their man of God, because they see him every day, they get used to, and they treat only as unholy things. God says, who's that touched the hack and died? It's a hard lesson for man to know that God really means what he says. I mean, you could see that in the Bible. He told Moses, Moses, speak to the rock. Moses, hit the rock. He says, Moses, you will not enter. Ladies and gentlemen, to whom much is given, much is required. There's a curse on those who depart from his commandments and put no difference between the common and uncommon things, between holy and holy things. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't begin to live like unbelievers. We must put a difference between holy and unholy things. God, if God requires it here, he still requires it today. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We must differentiate between the holy and the unholy. You see, let's, 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 let's take a look. Let's take a look. A little bit look into, into what goes on today. How do we behave in church when we come to church? Many of us are so used to coming to church that we just do anything when we come here. You know, you come to church, you do anything. How do you behave in church? People will be using their phone when the service is going on. They can't differentiate between holy and unholy things. The presence of Almighty God. You're using your phone. Some people are sending texts. 
That is why children of these days, some of them just die anyhow. Because they can't differentiate. There, there was a school, they caught people sending, some, some students were sending nude pictures in church. Are you wondering why they are going on? They have an accident and they are dying. You can't differentiate between holy and unholy things. God will not just take anything. Some people are in church, they are, using, they are sending text. <laughs> Please write this down, play it. They are sending text in church, communicating. Some people are playing games with their phone. Especially the youth, they will sit up there playing games. You must be able to differentiate between the holy and holy things. When we are in presence of the Holy God, God will not, does not accept all kinds of services. He will not accept things. I can go on. So people cannot differentiate between holy and holy things. As we enter in the new season, God says, I won't take everything anymore. If you want to worship me, worship me. Worship me in holiness and in truth. This is not the message of condemnation, but the message of holiness. We must, because without holiness, no man shall see God. We must be able to differentiate between what is holy and what is unholy. How do we dress to church, ladies and gentlemen? Some people, the clothes, they cannot wear to certain places. They come and wear it to church. God forbid. Some women come to church with all their body exposed. Half exposed, half exposed, they expose. They dress seductively. You must be able to dress between the Holy and the things. In the, in the Old Testament, they were told such which should be stoned. You can't come to church. You can't come to church. You know, some even play strange music. They play strange fire before God. Strange music. They can't differentiate between holy and unholy things. When we are in the presence of God, what sort of music do you play? When you, when you come to the presence of God, what can you differentiate between holy and holy things? You know, there are things you must not touch as a Christian. I shared with us several years ago, I went to, I went to visit someone and... As, as I was, as I was, we were talking about movies and stuff like that. And the man said, "Oh, ah, I have this movie for you, a Christian brother." I said, "Say, ah, pastor, just start this movie. Very nice. You and your wife should watch it." I said, "What? Ah, children cannot watch it. You can, you can only watch it in your bedroom because it contains some some scenes that is for adult only. You know, blah 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 blah. You know, and so he said, "But watch it too. You will love it. Your wife will love it." Ah. I took the movie. As I was going home, the Lord said to me, so, you are going to bring this movie into your bedroom. Don't you know that your bedroom is a holy place? Hallelujah. So I thought it was church that was only holy. The Lord says, your bedroom is the holies of holies. It's a holy place. You, don't, you can't take that kind of movie into your bedroom. No, you don't. Because people cannot, they, they perish because they didn't differentiate between holy and holy things. God said, don't bring that movie. He says, if you bring that movie into your bedroom, you are inviting dirty, unclean spirit into your house. So some movies, some music must not be played in your house. Some music shall not be played in your house. You must be able to differentiate between all these and all these things. The reason there is no power in the church anymore because a lot of people we have inflicted the church. People cannot differentiate between all these and all these things. They come to church, they do anything. In their home, they do anything also. They don't realize that their home, your house, is a holy place. It's almost wherever your footsteps, that place you are standing is a holy ground. So when I got there, I just dropped. I couldn't take the movie to my house. I had to hide it outside. The next time I went, to get, I went back to go and give the person, I said, I don't watch, I'm sorry. Because God says, you can't bring, because when you bring those things, it brings your own holiness into your home. So music you must not allow. You are driving your car, and you are preparing some music, you are inviting demons into your home, into your car. Your car is no longer the holy place. You see, everywhere you are, there must be holiness. You must be able to differentiate between holy and unholy things. There's some music you shouldn't listen to. A friend of mine that used to be in the occult told us, he says, some music as you begin to play it, attract demons, because you have been dedicated to demons. And children see, you see, without holiness, no man shall see God. Ellen White says that neither man Habihu would not have committed that fatal sin. I did not particularly, I did not become partially intoxicated by the fire, by free, sorry, by free use of wine. They came to the altar drunk. How many people come to church drunk, half drunk? They are not fully drunk, but they were half drunk. They come to the altar half drunk. You know. They, 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 use, they, they use wine. It says, by the use of wine, their minds become confused and their moral perception was dull. So they could not discern between sacred and common anymore. They could not discern between sacred and common by use of wine. So when you drink, your mind becomes confused. You can't discern between sacred and not sacred. That's why, listen to me, you can't be a child of God and be drinking. You can't be a social drinker. It's not allowed. See, I'm a social drinker. Who told you? 
The drunkard is a drunkard. You, can, you can't, by using wine, their minds become confused and their moral perception was dull. So whenever you drink, your moral perception becomes dull. So demons can come in and give you suggestion and rule you. That's why people cannot, people will not be able to do anything. They go and drink. They want to kill. They go and drink. They want to fight. They go and drink. Because when they drink, they know something takes over their spirit. It's demon that takes over your spirit. You must be able to. They, you will not be able to design between the sacred and the uncommon. You ladies, you go to parties and they give you wine to drink. You know they want to, they want to affect your mind. They want, they, want, they, want, they, want, they, want, they want to confuse your moral perception. They know immediately you go on that intoxication of wine. Your thinking is no longer right. They are pushed by demons. How many, people, how many young people's lives have been ruined when they take wine? They can't design between good and evil. They take wine. They can't design between good and evil. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, we cannot continue to live like that. First Peter 2 9 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I mean, it's such powerful scripture. You know, we cannot, we cannot continue to live that way because we are not just ordinary people, we are chosen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are, we are, we are people of God. You know, I'm reading First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you from darkness unto his marvelous light. Once you are not a people, but now you are a people of God. We are a people of God. Called by his name. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to live life. So we are coming back to church. We cannot continue to throw strange fire in church. We cannot continue, we cannot continue to do God require to, us to preserve every power we have in the best possible condition that you may render acceptable services to our creator. You cannot, you can't, you can't be coming to church half drunk. You can't come to church with, with, with demonic influences all around us. You can't dress anyhow. You see, when you are coming to the presence of God, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about children of God now. You see, a sinner can come to church anyhow and we get him saved. Hallelujah. If you come to church, you are a sinner, you get saved. We'll save you. But children of God, those who call themselves priests, those who call themselves minister of God, those who call themselves, oh, you're already saved. You are a child of God and you know the truth. You can't just, you must be able to differentiate between what is holy and what is unholy. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not accept every service. Service must be characterized by holiness. God does not accept every, every service. Ladies and gentlemen, if, I mean, look at the story of Ananias and Sapphira. God does not accept every offering. Not just service. You steal, you bring to church. You just expose yourself. Some people go and steal money, they are coming and bring it to church. God does not accept every offering. It is not an accepted offering. You know, look at what happened. You see, Ananias and Fas, I feel I thought it was the same season, but it's no longer the same season. They came in that time, they told a lie, and immediately judgment came. I'm saying the church is entering into a new season. We've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. We must be able to bring between the holy and the unholy things, between the common and the sacred things. They came to church. Oh, they, they told they are the owner of the land. Yeah, they sold their land. God didn't force them, but they came. And Ananias said, oh, this is how much we sold. We have brought everything. Peter said, everything. Yeah, we bought everything. Peter said, oh, no, you bought everything. Why are you lying to the Spirit of God? Immediately, instantaneous judgment. That was not the first time they were doing it. They have been used to it. So judgment came because the church is entering into a new season. And I'm prophesying, I say we are entering into a new season. When you are coming to church, you must live a holy life. You, can, you cannot do. God does not accept every service. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. It says to us, it says, oh, let me, let me read it. But who is joined to the Lord is one of spirits. Verse 18, 19, and 20. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality is sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not of your own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is our God. Ladies and gentlemen, people, I mean, people do a lot of things. But we are entering into a new season where God will not take certain things anymore. I don't believe was telling me that some of the girls that sing in choir in, the, in those days, I'm talking in the, in the early 2000 and something, so not a choir, but that church says, he said, I, that one, I can't go to that church. There's no power there. See, some of the girls that, that go to that church, he said, some of them, they sleep in my house overnight. They sleep with me overnight and then they come to that church and lead praise worship. So 
So you are coming from a bed of fornication and adultery and you are coming to church. God will no longer take such strange fires anymore. God will not. I say flee fornication. Book of Corinthians chapter 5 has talked about it says, oh, in fact it says, I wrote to you an epistle to, not to keep company. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9. Do not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I did not mean with sexually immoral people of this world or with conventions and social idolaters. No, I'm writing to you those sexually immoral people who are Christians. But now I've written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reverend or a drunkard, extortioner, or even eats with such a person. Don't keep company with brothers, sisters who are living an holy life. Don't keep company with them. God does not accept every sacrifice. First Corinthians, go and read First Corinthians 10, 31. First Corinthians 10, 31. It says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to what? To the glory of God. This thing you are doing, God does not accept all. You can't be living in holiness, in, in fornication and adultery, and then you come to the altar, or you are coming to church, you come from the place of the... No, this is a new era. God won't accept such anymore. Offering strange fire. Let me start to close. They offer strange fire before the Lord. They offer strange fire before the Lord. They offer strange fire. And there was instantaneous judgment. Because we're entering the new season. We must be able to appreciate what is holy from what is unholy. We cannot do church the way we do it anymore. There must be holiness. I say without holiness, no man shall see God. There must be holiness. Hallelujah. Minister who went to divorce his wife. is <coughs> offering a strange fire. He went to marry another person. I've seen several of them. Many of them die early because God will not accept such things. So people come to the pulpit and they tell lies on the pulpit. You are offering strange, strange fire because such things must stop. I'm telling you. Come, some people come to church and give fake testimonies. It must stop. You are offering strange fire. God says, I will clean the church. We can't continue the same way. People come, fake miracles. They say, ah. Some people say, oh. In this season that we are entering to such people shall be exposed. Judgment will come. Many start sleeping with church members. Judgment is coming. Church members sleeping with another church member's wife. Judgment is coming. Choir members sleeping around. Judgment is coming. And then you come from that place and you come to minister. No, you are offering strange fire. Judgment is going to come. We can't continue to do church the same way we do it. Say, Pastor Book, you are preaching a message of condemnation. No, it's a message of holiness. Without holiness, because the church is entering into a new, new season. New season. We have people that are stealing offerings. <laughs> people stealing money that has been brought to church. Some people, uh, in those days, some people are caught stealing money from the offering bag. Judgment is coming. God says, I will not only judge you, I will judge to the third generation. Stealing offering. You know, Offering these are ways by which you are offering strange fire before God. When people, when you go, some people go to Babalawos, they go to the Jew men, they go to other places to go and pray, and they come and dance in church. You are offering strange fire. God will not accept such things. You can't miss other things with God. If you miss other things with God, it's a strange fire. There shall be judgment. God doesn't accept such things. Oh, ladies, I want to talk about cultism. People are in courts and they are coming to church. They are offering strange fire. It's a season of judgment coming on. You can't do that anymore. I wish I had time to dwell on that, but no time. You cannot. Oh, mele, mele, shawuru. Mele, emiole, shiloji. Mele, sinyolorun, kwelu, mamonio. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't worship God with cultism. No, you can't do that. Strange fire. Strange fire. When you offer strange fire, fire from God is going to come. Judgment is a season. Number seven, people living double lives. Living double lives. They are here when they are in the house. When they are with children of God, they behave. Then they leave this place or they leave the presence of their parents or the parents of their friends who are Christians. When they get to unbeliever, they are living another life entirely. God will not accept that. You are offering strange fire. Such fire Fire is going to come. We cannot continue to live double life. Ask yourself, am I living a double life? Am I presenting another life? 
You are living another life to your family, to your wife, in the church. You are a saint, but outside the church, you are something else. You are offering strange fire before God. God is not going to accept that. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close tonight, Aaron lost how many? Two sons in one day. May we, may we not bury any of our children in Jesus' name. May we not be the one. And God said, you cannot cry because these children, you didn't train them very well. If we don't discipline our children, we may regret in future. We must differentiate between what is sacred and what is not. We must differentiate between what is holy and what is not holy. We must let us differentiate on what is holy. Oh my goodness, my time is up. Let me say this. How do you speak about ministers? Some people come. You, you see, you can't. Moses, Aaron, and uh, Miriam, they were talking their own. They were speaking badly about Moses. They didn't invite God, though. They were on their own. God says, God struck Miriam with leprosy. You can't be talking about man of God anyhow. Some people, they come, they come back from church. And they, oh, you now take your man of God, and then you use it as toothpick. After finishing on the table, you finish the ban. Say every evil thing about him. And you're wondering why your church you know, doesn't want to go to church or that, that church anymore. Doesn't happen. You're offering strange fire. Strange fire. When you don't respect the man of God, it shows you don't respect God himself. Because when you cannot respect the representative of God that you see, that means you don't respect God. They said things about Moses. I mean, God will not take that. There was a time some people said, no, 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 no. We would see the, we, 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 everybody is the same in the presence of God. God said, eh, hey, Moses, the story of Koha. Says, okay. God says, I will show them. Says, they said, Aaron too, Aaron is not special. Aaron is not, God fought for Aaron. Says, people said, no, 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 we are all the same. No, we cannot agree that. Go and read the story in Numbers. God said, let them bring their, everybody should bring their stick, walking stick. They all brought it, 12 of them. Aaron's walking stick, but dead. A walking stick that is dead. It's another growing tree. In fact, recently I read, I didn't know that. I just thought the only body that lives. I was saying, it grow almond, 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 fruits. I mean, God wanted to show. Not only did it grow tree, in 24 hours, it grew what? Almond. How can it, how can it, a walking stick grow almond? God said, uh -huh. so you can know that, no, I have chosen. When I choose people, I choose them. You don't mess them up. Hallelujah. And then they said, Moses, they said, Moses, you have killed the people of God, blah, blah, blah. Moses said, if I be a man of God, may you not die the same, may you not die a normal death. And, and the Bible says, the whole um, land, the land should open up and swallow them. That's what it means. Because you can't differentiate between what is holy and unholy. Let me just say two more. Strange fire. How do you treat divine instructions? I wish I could spend time on that. How do you treat divine instructions? When God gives you an instruction, do this. How do you do? How long? It takes you time. When, when God says, do it. <clears throat> I wish I could share on that. How do you treat divine instruction? When God tells you. When God says, give somebody. And you don't give. It takes a long time before you do it. When you are in need, it will take a long, 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 long time before you get your own. When God gives you divine instruction, go ahead and do it. How do you take divine instruction? You're offering strange fire. God said, do this for this person. You slow down. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. You are looking for excuse and excuse and excuse. When, is, when you need your own help, someone that is supposed to help you, with slow down, good measure, press down, shake it together, slow down. You're offering strange fire. Immediately, immediately, you, immediately you live out of divine instruction. You are in danger, ladies and gentlemen. God says, I'm not going to take that anymore. Maybe someday I'll finish. Let me repeat the last one. <laughs> How do you treat... Some people eat their tights. Let's talk about tight and offering. That's the whole topic. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. A sister was sharing her testimony with us. They were howling thief. I'm Robert, came to their house. And they wanted to... They say, Bring all the money you have. Bring all the money. The man, Jesus said, I don't have any money. The only money I have here is uh, tight. Dan Robert said, stupid woman. So you, you want us to take God's money. Dan Robert didn't collect that money from here. They left the tight. 
They left, they said, no, we don't want that one. So they kept, they said, go, 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 go. We don't want your money. Don't, don't get us into trouble. Now listen, arm robbers will not take tight. You, you are chopping it. You are chopping tight. You say you've left some offering for God, you are chopping it. Why will you not have a devourer in your life? God, strange fire. Strange fire. Arm robbers say they won't take it. <laughs> and you, you are chopping tight, free. Say, oh God, I'll just let me just borrow it. Borrow what? Is it your own? Strange fire. Ladies and gentlemen, as we enter, as we enter, your church is entering the new season. I just want to pray with us tonight that we would receive the, the mind of God. Receive grace to live a holy life. We must differentiate between holy and unholy. All the Bible says, all those who mention the name of God should depart from what? Iniquity. Because judgment is coming. We are entering into a new season where God wants to sanitize the church. Without holiness, no man shall see God. So we've got to be holy. We've got to be holy. We are going to resume church. We are going to resume church. But let's come. Don't let us come and offer strange fire before God because there will be starting those judgments in these days. Because the church is entering a new phase. Jesus is coming. So the church must be, church must be holy. It's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. So all those who are calling themselves brothers, it's not talking about unbelievers. Unbelievers can come in and they get saved. But when you are a brother, you must live holy. You must differentiate between what is holy and what is not holy. You must be to right what is not right. You can't just live, do church anywhere or anymore. When you come to the presence of God, let's come with holiness, with goodness, with thanksgiving. If you sin, don't run from God. Ask God to forgive you, but don't take God for granted. And offer strange fire. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus will soon be here. A new season. It's the dawn of a new season for the church. We will see miracles. When the church is holy, you see power. You see great manifestation. The church, what we need now is great power. Because you see, the world wants to stop us from coming to church. They want to stop us from doing what God wants us to do. So we, need strange, we, need, we need strange powers. We need straight, great manifestation of the power of God. So that the world will begin to respect the church. But when there is little, little sin, there is no power in our midst. I just pray, as we enter the new season, as I close tonight... Your life can either be an example or a warning. I pray that your life will not be a warning in Jesus' name. Your life shall be an example. As I'm speaking tonight, some of you as you are listening to me, there are some relationships you need to go and cut. I'm now speaking about prophetic work. You need to go and cut that relationship. Go and tell that man, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done with it. I don't want to offer strange fire. Oh yes. You know in your office, that relationship is not right. Go and cut it now. Stop it. You know, you've got to stop it. You can't continue. There are some of you, you are working with certain people. You know, they are taking you to drink. They are making you to live on holy life. Go and stop it. You are a brother. You cannot continue like that anymore. You can't offer strange fire. Let's rise upon our feet as we pray. I want you to begin to talk to God. No, 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 no. There's somebody here, you know, you know, you, you know, this, this, this relationship will not lead you to heaven. So why are you in it? You have friends that are always leading you to go to wrong places, to go to parties you're not supposed to go to, go to places you're not supposed to go, please go and stop it. Because you cannot, we cannot offer strange fire to God. After you have gone to do this as an hard lot, live an holy life and then you come to church and dance. No, we don't want those kind of things. God says you must be holy. You must repent and come to God. God wants you to come to church. He wants you to come but repent and stop it. Some relationship has to be broken. Ladies and gentlemen, God, we must not offer strange fires before God anymore. As we prepare for church, Without holiness, no man shall see God. Without holiness, no man shall. We must not offer strange fire. Let's break the yoke. Holy Spirit. Grace to live holy as God. Great change. Since I was born. Great change. Since I was born, great change, since I was born, it is a great change since I was born. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. It is a great change since I was born. Hallelujah! Great change since I was born. 
Great change since I was born. Great change since I was born. It is a great change since I was born. The drink I used to drink, I drink them no more. The clothes I used to wear, I wear them no more. The parties I used to go, I go there no more. It is a great change since I was born. Hallelujah, great change since I was born. Hallelujah, great change. I was born is a great change since I was born. The lies I used to tell, I tell them no more. I speak them no more. The causes I used to speak, the causes I used to speak, I speak them no more. It is a great change. Great change since I receive grace for change. Great change since I was born. Great change since I was born. Is a great change since I was born. But I will thank you for the great change. Teachers, not to treat holy things as unholy. Not to treat sacred things as common. Help us, Lord, we present our body to you today as a living sacrifice. That's what you said. Therefore, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Lord, today I present my body. Help us present our bodies to you, holy and acceptable. Not present, not present just any kind of body to our body, but to your body, O oh God. And let your name be glorified. As we prepare to resume a new season for the church, oh Lord, keep us holy. Keep us holy, oh God. Help us not to offer strange fires before you. And at the end of our work on heart, let us make heaven. Don't let us receive judgment. I pray that our life shall not be a warning, but shall be an example of goodness, of the blessing of the Lord. Thank you, Father, because we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we thank you for being part of the service tonight. Uh, we're just going to take an offering for one or two minutes. Please, you can send the offering. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. Send the offering to any of us. You will never share your glory with any Remember, don't eat the tithes. You are the Lord. Don't eat the offering. That is your name. You are the Lord. You, you are, are the Lord. Lord. That, that is your name. name. You, you will, will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Father, bless all our offerings in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Accept our offering. Accept our thanksgiving. Multiply back a hundredfold. Let people know that we serve a living God. Thank you for doing this for us. Because we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Just before we share the grace, we thank you for being here. For joining us. Please watch this message over again. Get yourself ready. Saturday, by the grace of God, we're starting church. And I want you to know that the government says not all of us can come. So, I mean, we will see on our website how many people can come. We would like to do two services, you know, and we'll let you know how many people can come. But it'll be first come, first serve. But as time goes on, I'm sure in the next couple of weeks, they will also change that, you know, by the grace of God. The announcement will be on. They say elderly people should stay at home for now as much as possible. Children will also stay at home for now as much as possible once you get that other directives from us. But I know that 
by the grace of God, things are going to work out fine. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon. God bless. Who can compare?